I've got such a cool and interesting episode for you guys today with Victor Sagalovsky. Always going to be the case with Victor. I found he's just such an interesting human. Seriously, there's something about him I've, at every event that I've seen him at. There's just like this intrigue. Um, and the big intrigue that I will say at this last event that everyone was talking about is how freaking young he looks. So if you want to see on YouTube, go look like it's like his skin is like so youthful and glowing. I think he said he's like 50, but it's not even just his skin. It's just like his whole energy and aura is like really young. Like it's very interesting. So what we're talking about today is deuterium depleted water. So Victor is the co-founder and CEO of light water scientific. And guess who the other co-founder is? Robert Slovak, the Quinton little water salt things and the glass things. If any health nerds have ever tried that, that's his co-founder on this. So Robert Slovak is like OG in water. So really, really cool um, that Robert jumped onto this with Victor. So what he's going to talk about today is the benefits of deuterium depleted water through his theory of that he calls endogenous radiation damage theory of aging. So it proposes that our biggest obstacle to longevity is the excess deuterium and other damaging isotopes on the planet. And that proper mitigation will radically extend our lifespan. So really interesting stuff. Uh, Victor was obsessed with this for a long time and then like went on kind of this really cool journey of like, yeah, it, it's interesting. I'll let him tell it to you guys, but I was just so blown away by just the whole concept of this. I think it's really fascinating. So I hope you guys too. Um, we'll link everything up in the show notes. And here is Victor Sagalovsky. Hey guys, I'm here at Biohacking Congress in Miami with Victor Sagalovsky of Lightwater. Um, this is an amazing event that has over 30 experts in the field of biohacking. There's over 30 vendors here, lots of great information coming out. If you miss this one, check out the next one. It's going to be in Austin in February, 2023. And we're going to be diving into deuterium depleted water. Okay. And I know for like 99.9% .9 of you, you've never <laughs> even heard the word deuterium ever. That's how I felt when I heard Victor speak at the last one that I saw you speak at. I'm like, what is deuterium? So let's start it's, there. It's, it's funny you say 99% of the people don't don't know about it because 99.8 percent of our bodies are water <laughs> <laughs> so most yeah. people, and most people don't know that either because yeah. they, they think we taught in school that it's 75 percent yeah if you look at molecular weight we're 99.8 percent water mm. and, but a little bit of that water is not h2o and that's deuterium mm. deuterium is an isotope of hydrogen so hydrogen is the simplest element in the universe. It's number one in the periodic table. Mm -hmm. And then in 1931, they discovered that hydrogen is just not one. There's two isotopes. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about the second isotope, which mm -hmm. is known as deuterium. Okay. And the difference is that a simple proton and a simple electron make up the abundant form of hydrogen, which is 99.85% of the universe. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the reason why our bodies use it and why, why it's the fuel for everything, for stars, for rocket ships, for us, is because it's so simple. It's a proton and electron. It gets through everything, right? Mm -hmm. and, deuter and, a, and a deuterium adds a neutron, mm -hmm. so it doubles the mass. But oxygen doesn't realize that it's different than proteum, so it still combines with it to form water. But in this case, it's not H2O, it's HDO or D2O. But D2O, that's called heavy water. There's not much of it, so we don't really concern okay. ourselves with it too much. But we concern ourselves with HDO, mm -hmm. where instead of that H on the H2O, you have that D, which is twice the weight. So in a half liter of water, which is 10,000 drops, you have three drops that are HDO. Mm -hmm. And this has a chronic effect in our biology, which is very negative. Okay, I want you to talk about, because I'm always like... <sighs> Uh, to me, the best biohacking is mimicking how nature is intended at its like at its best. At its best, right? So, what has happened over the course of nature? Like, why? Like, like, why is this an issue? You know, why isn't nature just well, providing us I'll with this? I'll tell you how. I'll tell you how it was discovered. Yeah. They were trying to figure out. Well, soon after, in the early '30s, they discovered this second isotope of hydrogen. So the Americans decided, well, we're going to see what it what what this D two O is. So they made a bunch of it because you have to make it in the lab. Mm. It looks like water, tastes like water, feels like water, and they drank it. On the fifth day, you die. Wow. Okay, so I said, this isn't water. Yeah. So they said, deuterium's bad. Yeah. Okay, and the Russians looked at it the other way, and they said, well, what is, how much 
deuterium is in all the water out there, and are, some places have less. Because they're trying to figure out, there are two populations, they're trying to figure out why they lived so long. Yeah. They had extreme longevity, and they were super healthy, and they were in Siberia, which is essentially mm -hmm. like living like Eskimos. Mm -hmm. And they honed in on, they tried to figure out why, you know, what, yeah. they, were, they were the couple, uh, couple of uh, uh, biophysicists and gerontologists was trying to make a name for themselves and, and prove yeah. this discovery, like why are these people living so long? Right. And then they realized that deuterium is not the same all over the planet, and mm -hmm. some places is less. Mm -hmm. So where these people were living was 16% less deuterium in the water, mm -hmm. and that has to do with the hydrological cycle. Mm -hmm. So in certain places on the planet, and mostly it's the same, like the ocean is 155.76 around the world. Oh, okay. And then in certain places, and two point what two percent of our water is fresh water that we can that we can drink on the planet. Mm -hmm. It's not very much when you consider we're a water planet. Yeah. But only less than two percent of what we can drink, and in, and in like ten percent of that two percent or less, there's areas that have less deuterium in the water because they're high in the mountains. The hydrological cycle is localized. It doesn't mm -hmm. come from the ocean, or mm -hmm. it's very high latitude, so it's mm -hmm. so it's intensified. So in some places, you get like a 10 to 20 percent reduction in deuterium. Mm -hmm. And so they, that's when they correlated that. They said, look, it must be that the people that live in places that have less deuterium, that's why they live longer. And they and they and they looked at this and they said, sure enough, this is the reason. And they published on this, and they did studies on mice and. Mm -hmm. mammals and, mm -hmm. uh, and plants and said when you reduce deuterium everything grows faster better healthier mm -hmm. so it's a burden it's a it's it's heavy right if you take if you take a regular hydrogen you take a deuterium this one's heavier okay yeah and this interferes in our biology because in our biology where there's a spot for a hydrogen if a deuterium comes in there it starts distorting that shape that you need in the DNA in enzymes and in the mitochondria it does a special kind of damage because we have these little motors, these nanoscopic motors in our mitochondria. Each mitochondria is 320,000 about of these motors, and they spin at 9,000 RPM, cranking away nonstop. If you look at it, it looks just like a little motor generator, like we would, like we would make. And it's shuttling protons, causing this thing to spin, and then it generates ATP, which is the energy currency of our biology. So, what happens is every five seconds, a deuteron gets into that motor, which is twice the weight. So it causes that motor to stutter and jam, basically. It mm. creates torque and shear, and that, mm. and that weakens the membrane. And eventually a membrane gets leaky. And we have leaky membranes, it's all over. You know, yeah. Call, call, call it in and shut it down, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, so this right. is what's happening at the microscopic level, right? At the molecular level and, and even at the atomic level, like I said, with, with uh, um, the, difference in, the difference in weight. And this, this changes the kinetics of how our biology operates. It slows things down. So as we get older, we, get, we slow down. Mm. Why? Because of this deuterium problem, it's a, prim it's a primary cause of aging. Was there ever a time on the planet that they know of that there was just less deuterium? Absolutely. We, we, we believe that what happened in the last 12 to 26,000 years, the deuterium level went up by 15 to 20% on the planet. And one of those reasons is when you had the ice age, and all those I, and, and all those glaciers melted. They released a great amount of methane into the atmosphere. Mm. And methane is full of hydrogen, so there's more chance of deuterium. Mm. So that's one thing that happened. And if you look further back in time, you could look to Antarctica, which has the lowest deuterium level on the planet, mm. which is 89 ppm. Mm. Quite significant when you consider that here in Miami, it's like 150 ppm the drinking yeah. water. So that is water locked in time huh. millions of years ago. Right. So yes, the, the deuterium level on this planet has been creeping up. And what the and what the deuteronomics, which is a new science, a new branch of biochemistry, mm -hmm. which endeavors to explain how deuterium is managed by the body, cool. that that informs us that the ideal deuterium level in the body is about twenty percent less than we have now. Mm -hmm. So it's in the hundred and twenty ppm range. Mm -hmm. like if you want to optimize and really tune in your biology, you drop the deuterium level by twenty percent. Okay, so how do people, besides, you know, we'll get into light water and your science behind this, the deuterium depleted water, how else can people drop the deuterium level in their body? They can go keto and they can eat less. <laughs> so how does keto, how does that work? So With keto, deuterium? keto, first of all, if you're burning a ketone body versus glucose, mm -hmm. you're going to get roughly a little bit more than three times the ATP. Mm -hmm. so, it's, so it's much more efficient energy production to run from fat than glucose. Not that you don't need glucose, we do, but, but the primary bulk of your energy supply should come from fat because it's just easier, right? You just get more, my, just the, you get more mileage on your vehicle, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. so, uh, 
So then you have, um, then you have so two you're points. Saying, so, so you're saying it one. just increases the mitochondrial efficiency, which helps get rid of deuterium, or is there some other connection? The other connection is that when you burn fat, uh -huh. okay, like 2.2 or two, some over a little over 2.2 pounds of fat in your body that you burn, you produce metabolic water. And our metabolic water, the water that's inside our cells, is already deuterium depleted. Because hmm. the body's trying really hard to keep this stuff away from those motors. Uh -huh. Okay, and away, away from everything. But, it, but it, eventually it gets overrun, very quickly, you know, mm -hmm. from birth to death. So, so if, when, we, when we fast, mm -hmm. or when, we, when, we're, when we're eating keto, we're not burning carbs, we're burning fat. And that mm -hmm. fat is, the fat has a less deuterium in it. So that's nature's yeah. strategy. Mm. Nature's strategy is to is to deplete the is to deplete the fats and lower mm -hmm. the carbs, and if you and if you look at a plant, mm -hmm. it's very simple. It's it's all it's all based on gravity. It keeps the heavier down, mm -hmm. and what's lighter is up top, right? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's it's all about conservation of energy and path of least resistance. So you can you can see that the uh, you know you can you can observe nature and go okay this, I I get this because it, it really when you start understanding this you see how deuterium fits in all life cycles in nature. And just before we weren't conscious of this, we're, we're nine years away from even from even celebrating 100 years of knowing that hydrogen had more than one yeah. form. Yeah. So this is yeah. all this is all yeah. very new to us. Yeah. But to ancient people, they lived in areas that, or people that lived in areas that had less deuterium, had better health. So, so with the metabolic water, and you're saying when you lose body fat, you create this metabolic water, yes. which will is like deuteri deuterium depleted water yes. endogenously. Yes. So could people could that all, they, even if they weren't keto, but if they're losing body fat, would it have the same effect? It would, but just not as well. It would be it wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't go down to the 120 ppm range. You hmm. could get you could get into the 130s, which is which is fantastic. Uh huh. Fasting. Yeah. <laughs> so you're saying being in a ketogenic state, losing body fat, increasing your mitochondrial efficiency, this and, whole and eating fat because fat's going to be lower. Like a, if you're like a good, versus yeah, like a like a good animal fat, yeah, would be in 120 ppm range, mm. okay, and a mm. car and a, and a and carbohydrates would be like above 150. Mm. So and that's so, a, that's huge, right? Yeah, that, that, that delta is huge because this yeah. is something that. This is something that happens over time. Yeah, yeah. You think about 10 years, 20 years, 30 years of your life and how much energy is wasted on repair. Yeah. And then incorrect repair. Right, right. Yeah, so it's like a, this is a new interesting field of another benefit that we get from increasing mitochondrial efficiency, losing excess body fat. Absolutely, you know? yeah. yes, it's absolutely. A, it's something that maybe hadn't been considered before in that whole talk because obviously that's going to increase longevity if you're not having these, what you call them, like little kinks in your motors? Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, it causes the motor to stutter. Yeah. And imagine something spinning really, really fast, right. all of a sudden goes, go, 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 and yeah. every five seconds. So, so it weakens everything around it, including the motor itself. Yeah. And eventually, it just, just, it just says, I'm done. You yeah. know, it, bra it breaks. It yeah. breaks the motors. Yeah, so you've so, been on this journey for a while, right? And yeah. like, because Lightwater's only been around for the last few years, but there was like a mountain of work that came before that. Can you talk but, about the journey you've been on with that? Sure. Well, I, first, I read my first article about this in, I think, 2004. Uh huh. And it just, it made sense to me mm -hmm. because I'm like an armchair gerontologist. <laughs> so I'm looking for like, what is the cause of aging? Like, well, I don't, you know, I, I, I really, yeah. while we're here, why not try to figure it out? Right, right. <laughs> right? At, right. Least, at least make some headway for the next generation, perhaps. Yeah. But uh, I was always enamored with these stories when I was a kid of all these immortals, you know, yeah. living for hundreds of years and looking young. I'm like, yeah. is that is that is that a, is that real or is that not? Right. And I, and I figure if it's in our consciousness, if somebody if somebody had the creativity to even imagine it, then there must be some validity to it. Yeah. Right? Which, so. by the way, I'm going to interrupt you really quick and just say, like, I moderated a panel. We're talking about reversing biological age, and I like kind of went home, was doing my own thing, and I was like. Whatever Victor's doing is freaking working. Because you said you just turned 50 this yeah, year. Yeah. And I was like, I mean, he's like, whatever he's doing is working. And I know a bunch of people said that when you spoke yesterday, too. Like, your skin is glowing. Like, you do look a bit ageless, you know? Like, you don't look older than, like, 20-something-year-old, per se. Except you can, you can kind of tell, but your skin is vibrant. You're, when, you walked, when you walk in, it's vitality like you're just like yeah. alive yeah. you know yeah, the it, lightness of being yeah is a, is a benefit of deuterium depletion yeah, yeah. so it's, yeah. it's it's i just had to say that like it's, it's definitely it's what definitely you're works. what you're 
doing, whatever you're doing, it's like obviously working. It's DDW. I mean, I'm yeah. not doing much else. I know yeah. the right supplements to take. I know yeah. the right food to eat. You know, I know I know nutrition really well. I know diet. Yeah. Uh, but all of that, they don't move the needle like this. Yeah. Because this is the only thing that will give you a net energy benefit at the end of the day. Hmm. Everything else has has a net. Everything else has gives you immediate energy. Right. But ultimately, it's yeah. a little bit. It it's money in you. the bank. <laughs> You're putting money in the bank. So okay. So 2004, you you know probably I I think a sense of calling or purpose something hit you something with hit this. Me. Something hit me. And with then this. what happened? And then I started researching how to make it. <laughs> you know? Cool. And I failed miserably until I went to Russia. Wow. You know, and we saw how it was really done. Wow. You know, because of, because it's so difficult to remove. You're not removing a contaminant from water per se, yeah. or like fluoride or a mineral or, right. or something. You're removing water from water. <laughs> yeah, I because I, like both times I've seen you speak now, I somebody will be like, D "Will this machine work? Will my hydrogen machine I wish it work?" Did. Well, yeah. I wish it did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you wish yeah. it did. So okay, so what happened? What what has to happen for this process to happen? Well, it's it's you basically have to mimic or, or you have to duplicate. Um, you have to be creative in duplicating the hydrological cycle. <laughs> oh, okay. So you can't do that at home. <laughs> you can if you've got maybe twenty feet of clearance, or we, yeah. we need fifty feet because it's it's gravity. You have to. Wow. There's a we exploit some we exploit a phase change difference. So if you have H two O and H D O, they'll have a slightly different point of phase change from from freezing. And from and and for and to uh, mm. or into steam, right? Mm. So when the when the when the water changes, mm -hmm. when it changes its phase, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we use we use the steam side, and it used you know they, they were trying to figure out how to do the freezing part, and so was I. So mm -hmm. uh, because because if you have a deuterium in the water, either, either D2O or H2O, that's going to have a slightly higher freezing point. So in the beginning, it was thought that you can put some water in your freezer. Yeah. And that top layer that forms first, uh -huh. you can pull that off, Interesting. and that's going to have more deuterium. And that's in fact true. <laughs> However, if you do it 20 times, you'll get maybe maybe one ppm. Oh, so it doesn't work. Okay, and yeah. that's what I was trying to do at first. This is so awesome! Like the the passion, I love it. <laughs> right, I was trying to skim that off the top. You must then, have this holy grail. And I'm like, and I'm like, well, I must be blessed with. The, I came here as a seven year old child from the Soviet mm -hmm. Union, mm -hmm. so I grew wow. up, I grew up speaking Russian. Wow. So I'm like, I, I I'm failing at this, and and nobody can help me because nobody knows the science here in the U.S. I figure, mm -hmm. but. I speak the language, even though yeah. I've never been, even though I've never been there and wow. as an adult. Wow! I went to Russia and I found the scientists that were doing this. Wow! And it was just so perfect because they had just spent the last fifteen years building this factory. Wow! <laughs> okay, <laughs> the, the, my my partner there now, he was yeah. obsessed as I was. That's with awesome. This because he read because he got a copy of that book in the early '60s when he was a kid. Wow! Of those Russian Siberian studies, and he said, "This is it." Wow. So when he made a Love bunch it. of money, he just he just threw most of it into this factory. Wow. And when I found them, they were about to close down because they didn't they didn't know how to market or get. Or wow. they, they, wow. they just they, they just had faith that this Very is this cool. has to change the world because wow. because we understand what deuterium does and it's so it's such an easy intervention. But to make it is so difficult. So they spent an incredible amount of money, incredible amount of time, mm -hmm. and they finally got to the point where they were commercially producing. And that's when I showed up. Wow. My partner Robert. And we're like, wow, this is fantastic. Which, by the way, is can, is, can you just share who Robert is? Robert, many of Slo you Robert Slovak, yes. Many of you may know him. He's a, a legend. He's, he's a legend in this, in this field. He'll, uh, first, he's a legend for uh, him and his brother starting with reverse osmosis. Mm -hmm. Okay, That was in the late 60s, early mm -hmm. 70s. And then uh, he's legendary for being the first to popularize and import ketone marine plasma into this mm -hmm. country, yeah. which is a big win. Then he created the hydrogen tablet which everybody I think here uses yeah. and loves and uh, understands the benefit of hydrogen. So he was really early in the yeah. development of a lot of these pivotal pivotal things and things that we call biohacks now. Yeah. Or before that was a, that what term didn't exist, but uh, but certainly the movement did to optimize your health and uh, I think uh, everybody called uh, bio called biohacking yoga back then. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so and so now it's like obviously Robert's been on the cutting edge of like yeah, no, and, and, I, and water. I, and Robert's got a he, Robert uh, um, has a great quote. He said, you know, in 40 years of 
being a water scientist in the water industry. And by the way, he's a real rock. He, he went to school for rocket science. So he started as a rocket <laughs> scientist. So it's 40 years wow. of, of being in the water purification. Mm. It didn't occur to him until later when he discovered this himself. Oh, that, wow. that, 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 that this was so important. Because wow. what we have here is a new standard of water purification. Mm. Not everybody can reach that standard yet, right. but I hope eventually more people do. There's four companies in the world right now that can do this. Wow. Okay. Because they all, we all, and we, we don't share our notes. So everybody figured out how to yeah. do it on their own. Right. Okay. We're all friendly, but, but uh, we yeah. all have, we all have, uh, we all use a very similar process, but unique to, uh, unique to us. Yeah. So what we do, we, we can, re our company is unique in that we can remove the most amount of deuterium from the water. Okay. okay, not that it's a big deal, but you know, for us, it's like a little well, something. Yeah, it <laughs> is. Bump. It matters. It's little, good to know. Yeah. yeah, it's good to know. Okay, so you've got this. I I think I saw a picture of it. I believe. I mean, it's a huge facility. It's a huge facility. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we're getting ready to build one here in the U.S. Oh, right on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a big thing, and and what I tell everybody is that right now, because we can't make a lot of water for that many people, it's expensive. What makes it expensive as well, not only the, all the equipment we have to put together, but the power, the electricity, mm -hmm. and in this case, we use, uh, we use natural gas, or we can use any energy, but, but uh, it's, it's energy intensive, mm -hmm. because you're heating, you're cooling, you're heating, you're right. cooling nonstop, you know, 24 seven, and you've got 70 of these columns, and they don't produce that much. They mm -hmm. kind of, <laughs> a little right. bit, a little bit every day, right? Yeah, what are you saying? How, what's the, how many drops, like? It, well, we, we produce, one, one giant column will produce less than uh, close almost between 15 and 20 liters per day which is like nothing Whoa. right so you need like you need like massive amounts of these so I yeah. appeal to everybody that there's a scientist out there that will figure out how to make a home unit you put us out of business but that's okay yeah because it's important it's like if we were sitting here in 1880 and we were talking about wow it would be so nice to not have to use those gas lamps anymore i yeah. wish somebody would invent a light bulb right <laughs> right but you know it's coming so yeah. it is it is coming but a home machine to make a home machine to remove this it would be the equivalent of the invention of the light bulb because it ha because it's so difficult it, it, it needs a whole new way of thinking so mm. it's a it's a whole evolutionary leap for us in technology to be able to do this so i myself am looking at things uh, how to do it by uh, mimicking the way uh, biomimicry, mimicking the way our body does it. So I'm studying the way that our body selects for deuterium because yeah. it does. Yeah. So it tries to keep it out of our most important energy producing pathways. And yeah. there is a hydrogen exchange that happens. There are certain enzymes that prefer mm. the deuterium. And the reason is because of the kinetics. Because deuterium disassociates nine times slower from the carbon. So you can exploit the fact that there's a slower disassociation, right? Mm -hmm. If you if you if you're all if you're in a race, mm -hmm. the guy that's the guy that's got a big lead weight on his mm -hmm. foot is going to be last. He's right. like, come on, catch up! I'm right. trying, I'm trying, yeah. <laughs> right? Right. So so we're looking at that. That's and, cool. Uh, yeah. That's cool. So you're. I mean, the mission is reduce deuterium, and you're mission like, is this is the mission most. Mission is reduce deuterium, and mission is to let people know that there's a new standard of water. Yeah. A new standard of water purity. Okay, so in terms of like, so light water, obviously, this is deuterium depleted water. Does this is deuterium when water. you drink this, is it actively helping deuterium come out of your body, or you're just not taking in as much deuterium? No, it's both. Okay. Absolutely, it's both. There's a mechanism known as hydrogen exchange. Okay. So the water that you replace that day or yeah. today, today, if it has less deuterium than the water that you have yeah. in your body, right. you're going to release some of that deuterium. Right. Uh -huh. About half a ppm to one ppm per day. Okay. Okay. So, so yeah, and and if you're drinking this water, then you're limiting the amount. Okay. Of you're not taking in as you're, much. You're right? drinking water that's closer to the metabolic water in your cells, mm -hmm. because none of the water we drink makes it inside our cells. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we don't trust it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we make our own water. Yeah. The body makes it what it needs. It just needs the building blocks. Right. So you're giving it better building blocks. Right. You're giving it less burden because the body, because really, the body is trying to keep deuterium away from our DNA, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But it gets overrun. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and, so, and so we age, we break down. Mm. And that's and, one of the reasons. It's not the main right. reason of aging. It could be right. one. I mean, it's yeah, it's a concert of things. But right. out of all the things I found that affect our aging, this was the one thing I could do something about. Yeah. Yeah. The other things are still haven't figured out how to. I can. I understand what they are. Just haven't figured out how to mm. how to mitigate it. Yeah. Well, I mean, we all have seats at the table, right? There's, you know, I'm helping people with 
training and nutrition and some, you know, things like that. And you're helping with deuterium and the guy over there is helping with salt and the guy over there is helping with, you know, other blood labs or whatever, you know, so there's so many, and this is obviously like your calling is like serve here, help them understand this. I've always been a water person. Yeah. Yeah. My whole whole life I've been drawn to water. Mm. Go to hot springs, map out where the natural water sources are. I just have this. Yeah. This, this pull toward water, awesome. and water has a pull toward me. Awesome. You know? So I went to go live on the islands for a long time, and I'm Makes always sense. the water. And so, mm-hmm. so water, water is really important, and uh, and we are swimming in it. Ninety nine point eight percent. Yeah. Yeah. Right. How did you uh, team up with Robert? How did you guys meet? I'm just curious. Robert's a mutual friend. They're mutual friends. Okay. So we're both. Yeah. In the, we're both in the same space. Somebody's like, you guys need to. Yeah. Yeah. We team looked, up. And yeah. we looked at it. We actually looked at it. For a while, and, uh, and 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 realized that this was going to be a, a hard go because nobody ever heard the word in here. Right? Yeah, I, I feel that with you. Like I, you know, one time I was listening to a really old podcast from Ben Greenfield, and I think he was talking about cold immersion. And but this was from like 2011 or something, doing ice baths or whatever. And I was like, wow, that's like such a common thing now. Like everybody does cold immersion. Yeah. But no, in 2011, well. it was like. It was like a hard sell a little bit, you know? It was like, hey, does it really help? Do I really need to do I've this? I've been doing keto since early 2000s. <laughs> yeah. And at first, I figured out how to do how to do keto as a, as a uh, primarily a, a raw foodist or a fruitarian. I figured out how to wow. do keto as a fruitarian. What? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Lots of exercise and fasting. Fasting. Yeah. Yes. A lot of lot, uh, avocados, uh-huh. coconuts. Wow. A lot of oils. Wow. Right. Yeah. Nuts, seeds, ferments. Wow. All yeah. This stuff. You've been biohacking for a minute now. For a minute, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but that's where I feel like you know, kind of how where Ben Greenfield was with the the cold plunging, you know, and uh, over a decade ago, I feel like I I kind of sense that with you now. I'm like good for pine, good for you pioneering, right? Because I understand you've, I mean, you've dedicated your life to this research. It like, will, it will hit a critical Deep in mass. it, yeah, it and you're you're helping people understand. And oh, that's another thing. In your talk yesterday, there were so many questions. I've never seen people like interrupt a presentation before. <laughs> they just had to get. <laughs> yeah. Tell me. I'm like, I don't think he's taking questions yet. He's still in the middle of his presentation, but <laughs> the they were just dying yeah, to know. Yeah, yeah. It's probably because you have this vitality. They felt comfortable with you, you know. But anyway, they, people were asking like, how much, you know? But that's a question. Like, so if I get light water. Which, by the way, where where do you guys ship to? Who can get light water? We can ship anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. U.S. or Canada, yeah. okay. And we can ship other places too. It just gets very expensive because okay. it's, it's, it's water okay. heavy. You really want it? You can yeah. go that route, yeah. or you can come to one of these events because you guys. You come. You can yeah. come to one of these events. Um, but obviously, you can get it. Is it lightwater.com or? It's drink light water. Drink light water. That's right. L I T E W. Yeah. L I T E. Yeah. Drink light water. Um, but yeah, people are everyone. How much do I need to make a difference? You know, what what do you say to somebody? Gosh, like, anything gosh. will make a difference. <laughs> right. Yeah, anything will make a difference. It's right? like somebody but saying, "How much should I exercise?" But if but if you want to, but, but, but if you want to approach it in a uh-huh. you know, in a more scientific mm-hmm. fashion, you want to get down to the 120 ppm range. Yeah. That's gonna that's gonna mean either one one or two bottles a day. Okay. So uh, half a liter to one liter a day. And some people like originally there's two protocols. Uh-huh. One is to dilute because we have 10 ppm. And you don't need to drink 10 ppm straight. Okay. It's unnecessary, especially okay. in the beginning, because you're whether you drink 10 ppm or 100 ppm, your body's only going to be able to oh, lose a okay. little bit a day. Okay. Right? Okay. It might go a little faster, but not yeah. not not much. Don't waste it. Don't yeah. Don't waste it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Don't waste it. So, uh, people dilute. So yeah. They dilute between one to one and one okay. to four, which gives you between 80 or 122 ppm. Got it. So that's 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 the way you do it in a clinical fashion. Got it. If you're going for a linear depletion. Mm. Because this is used in different clinical protocols, mm. and if it's just a lifestyle modification, you say, oh, you know what? I'm going to drink mm. half a liter or a liter of it a day. Mm. Forget about everything else. Make sure I test myself after three months. Yeah. So how do you test? Saliva. We have a we are, we set up a lab. Okay. It was a real pain. In the nice. Ears. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so through your website, through... Uh, de- yes, through our website or deuteriumtest.com, same deuteriumtest.com. one. Deuteriumtest.com. Yeah, so we bought this instrument, uh, it's like 150 grand, and wow. it took a year to get it, to oh, another year cool. to tune I want to do it. it. And, and now well, we can measure saliva. And then you mail it, and they yeah, spit you just the mail tube, it. and you, you mail it. Yeah, 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 we give you a kit, oh, you spit cool. the tube, and, okay. then, and, then we, and then we measure it. And, and you're saying tests after three months? After three months, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. whether you're... So if, you're, so if you take that dilution approach, yeah. That's a more linear depletion, which is good if you're dealing with something like some illness. Uh-huh. So you won't. So otherwise, 
Otherwise, you know, our lifestyles are, 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 are different, you know, so we travel a lot, so you drink one here, one two, it's not, it's not balanced, it's not consistent. Right. But you still will deplete deuterium, okay. it just won't happen like this. Okay. Right? Maybe right. one day it'll be half a PPM, maybe one day it'll be nothing, maybe yeah. one day it'll be, one day you'll raise a little, one day it'll go, so, so you can dilute and make that nice linear depletion. Okay. Or if you're a disciplined person where you know every day I do this, yeah. you say, okay, I'm going to drink half a liter right. or a liter a day. Yeah. And then depending yeah. on what else, what other water you drink, at the end of the day, you can do the math in your head and say, okay, well, I drank a liter of uh, DDW, but I drank a liter of something else too. Mm -hmm. So that's a one to one mm -hmm. ratio at the mm -hmm. end of the day. So you know that you know that today you consumed 80 ppm of yeah. liquid. Yeah, interesting. And, and if your body's one one fifty or anything right. really above that above that figure, right, you'll it's you'll reduce help. a little bit. Yeah, very cool. Okay. Yeah, I know and if you do this long enough, like I have, what I learned, if you do it long enough, after the first year, your tissues start dumping deuterium. Mm. And that's when you get that lightness of being. Mm. That's where I get that vitality mm. because because I cleared I cleared out the superficial deuterium and then it went deeper mm. and it came Makes out sense. of the tissues because we have one to four grams of this stuff in our body. It doesn't seem like very much at all, like one little one gram. Right. <laughs> you know? But it, it but it's but it's more than the basic constituents of life: glucose, potassium. We talked about glucose. There's mm -hmm. almost five times more deuterium than glucose in our body. Wow. No, it's attached to glucose because right. it's hydrogen. But 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 when you look at it by when you look at it just by molecular weight, you go, there's a lot of this stuff in our body, and that's and that's how the scientists started looking at it. Uh, and the, you have that first wave of scientists that said, hey, this is either good or this is bad, and we did the tests and we said the animals live longer and plants grow bigger. But in the early 2000s, they were trying to figure out why mm. <laughs> this right. deuterium has this problem. So right. Dr. Olgun, who discovered this mitochondrial problem with the nanomotors. I asked him, I said, what made you even interested in looking at this? Mm -hmm. He said, "He said because I looked at how much deuterium was in the body. I said, there's a lot of this stuff. Mm. Is it do anything? Right. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should look into Maybe it a little bit. we should look into it. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. And, then if, and we started reviewing all the old literature. Yeah. He says, hey, this is really something. This is significant. So he spent two years of mathematical modeling on that nanomotor to figure out exactly the kinetics of the difference between that mm. deuteron and the proton coming in. Wow. And unfortunately, those motors have a spot for one proton, mm. and a deuteron is like two, right? It's a neutron right. proton, it's a square peg in a round hole, it just mm. doesn't fit, mm. and it causes that motor to jam. Mm. And then, and yeah, so we can talk about this. Yeah, I'm assuming if people want to learn more, they can go to drinklightwater.com and you guys have lots references of for lots all of it. Lots of information, and if, yeah. and if they're, uh, if you're practitioners or if you're scientists, researchers, very curious, you can go to deuteriumdepletion.org Mm. And there you'll find most of the studies that have been done in the last 60 years in all the languages mm. because we are censored on Wikipedia. Yeah, I saw that, and it's frustrating, right? It's frustrating. It, it's frustrating, but then, but then, you know, we're not alone. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm censored on social media. We're not, right now, we're so. not alone. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you're not alone. Um, well, thank you so much, Victor. I love hearing like uh, the, the calling, the spark, the passion, the desperation. I'm going to go to Russia <laughs> so I can get this stuff for me, and then I'm going to help everybody else get it too. And I, I, I what love a, it was such a blessing because <laughs> I show up to this country, and I'm an American. I came here when I was seven. Right. Okay? But at home, I was Russian. Right. So I show up at this country I've never been in. Yeah. But I, but I can speak the language. Yeah, that's going to be so weird. weird. It was the weirdest thing. It was just the weirdest thing. You're like, I'm just a and really good... Like, and I felt like, destiny. <laughs> Seriously, though. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. How amazing Seriously. is that whole yeah. story? Yeah, it's crazy. So cool. Thank you so much for sharing it with us, guys. Check out drinklightwater.com, and um, yeah, we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. Thank you.